we're ready to start looking at the instantaneous rate of change of the function. The idea is this. Imagine that a function is, like in this picture, increasing, and we want to know how fast it's increasing. If it were increasing at the rate that it is at the point indicated by the blue dot, if it kept increasing at the same rate, then the graph would follow this straight line. But it doesn't keep increasing at that rate. In this picture, the graph is curving down, which means the rate at which the function is increasing is actually slowing down. So if we did what we've done before, which is to look at the average rate of change, what we could do is find another point on the graph, like this, and find the average rate of change by calculating the slope of the line through those two points. But notice that that average rate of change is a little bit less because that slope is a little bit less than the slope of the red tangent line we were looking at a moment ago. That's okay. We can take advantage of this idea of calculating the average rate of change, the slope of the line that connects two points on the graph. We can use that to come up with the slope of that red tangent line we were looking at. Here's how. Our second point is going to be near the point we start with. Uh, let's imagine that if the x-coordinate of the first point is called a, we're going to add a little bit to that to get the x-coordinate of our next point. Let's call the amount we add h. So our next point will say it has an x-coordinate a plus a little bit. And then the y-coordinate is whatever you get by plugging that x value into your function. So by calculating the slope of the blue line you see here, we would get the average rate of change of this function over the interval from x equals a to x equals a plus h. Well, here's how we're going to take advantage of this. Let's let h be a little bit smaller and a little bit smaller. And what you can see here is as we let h get smaller, the blue line we're drawing gets closer and closer to looking like that red tangent line. So all we have to do is evaluate this quantity for the average rate of change, treating h as a variable, and then ask what happens as h gets smaller and smaller? What happens as h gets closer and closer to zero? That sounds like a limit, and in fact that's exactly what we're going to do. We'll take the limit as h approaches zero of the slope of this blue line, we end up with the slope of that red tangent line. Here's the definition. For a function, f of x, the instantaneous rate of change at a point is calculated from this limit. This limit is exactly what we were just looking at, right? It's the slope of the line that connects those two points on the graph. Notice that the numerator is the difference in the two y values between those points. The denominator is the difference in the x values between those two points. So that fraction is the slope of that blue line. And then we're going to bring the two points closer and closer together by letting h get smaller and smaller. By letting the distance between the x-coordinates of the points get smaller and smaller. And from that value, from that limit, we're going to get the instantaneous rate of change. It also happens to be the slope of the tangent line to the graph of the function. And this is an important calculation, an important idea in calculus, and so it actually has a, a, an important sounding name to go with it. We call this quantity the derivative of the function f at the point x equals a. So let's see a quick calculation for how this would actually work. Uh, let's find the instantaneous rate of change of the function x squared at the point where x is equal to 1. So we're going to use that formula from the previous screen, uh, f of a plus h minus f of a over h, but our a value here is 1. So we're going to plug that in, and this is what we have to calculate. The limit, as h gets closer to 0, of f of 1 plus h minus f of 1 over h. Now f is the function x squared, so when we're calculating f of 1 plus h, that really means we're calculating 1 plus h quantity squared. Whatever is inside the argument, inside the parentheses for the function, gets plugged in for the x. So that whole thing gets squared. 
and the second term in the numerator is just f of 1, so that second term becomes 1 squared. Well, we can simplify this a little bit. If you evaluate 1 plus h quantity squared by distributing or foiling it out, you're going to get 1 plus 2h plus h squared. That's what we see in the first numerator on the second line. And then you also see a minus 1 at the end. That's what you get from minus 1 squared, right? Because 1 squared is just 1. And then you can clean that up a little bit because you can cancel the 1 at the beginning of the numerator with the minus 1 at the end of the numerator. And so the limit we're looking at now at the end of the second line is the limit of a rational function where the variable is approaching a value that would make the denominator 0. And you can't divide by 0, so we can't just plug in a 0 for h. But we know how to deal with this kind of expression when we're calculating this limit. What we do is we try to factor to see if we can cancel factors, and hopefully that will allow us to calculate the limit. And sure enough, it does. If we factor an h out of the numerator, then you can cancel that h with the h in the denominator, leaving you with the limit as h approaches 0 of 2 plus h. And that's just a polynomial. And we can evaluate the limit of a polynomial by plugging in the value that the variable approaches. In this case, we plug in a 0 for h, and we see that the limit is 2. That's it. We just calculated the instantaneous rate of change for a function using the formal definition.